Here's the scenario. Your shipping clerk appears to be done with his work and he's now on his phone. So you, as the shop supervisor, well you grab your phone and you send him a text. You tell him you want him to watch some videos and then you're going to send him a tool list and he's going to fill it for you. And here's the tool list. A half inch two flute end mill with a minimum two inch length of cut and a half inch four flute end mill with a minimum two inch length of cut an 832 tap, a number three center drill, and a drill for the tap, and now you tell me the size with the drill chart that you've been provided. Woodruff cutter with the following dimensions, A 2.5 inches, B 0.1875 inches, C equals four inches with a minimum eight flutes. But before he can gather the tools, he needs to learn about the tool holder, so he's going to start with some videos about the Cat 40 holder and some of the components associated with it. The shipping clerk reads the text and heads off for the tool crib. Once he's there, he uses his phone to watch the following series of videos. This is an introduction to the Cat 40 holder. And here's the Cat 40 holder. Here it is in action. And here it is being taken out of the haws. So let's take a close up look at it. One of the first things we look for is the angle of the Cat 40 holder, which is very important, and the pull stud, which is extra important. These are the specifications for the Cat 40 holder. This is just for your reference. And now we're going to take it apart, take a look at the components. First is the pull stud. You must use the proper pull stud. You can damage the machine very easily. It screws into the body. Here's the ER collet located inside the Cat 40 holder. The tapers match up. Here's the cap that holds the ER collet in. ER collet snaps into the cap. and the cap threads onto the holder. Once the tool is inside, the ER collet will tighten down on it. When working with sharp tools, always use a tool tube. And that's the basics of the Cat 40 holder. Thanks for watching. This is a video about the ER collet and here's what a large one looks like. This is an ER40. They come in different sizes. ER collet has a taper that matches the taper inside the Cat 40 holder. When it's tightened down, it holds inspection devices and tools in place. ER collet snaps into the cap. Make sure it's snapped in, give it a little spin. And then that threads into the Cat 40 holder. Smaller ER collets that use a 1032 or an 832 tap may not be concentric. You may need to indicate them in so you don't snap your tap. So we'll slide a three quarter inch tool into the three quarter inch ER collet and tighten down the cap. And we'll use a spanner wrench. Whenever you're removing or installing cutting tools into an ER collet or a Cat 40 holder, always use a plastic cap to cover it so you don't cut yourself. Tighten or loosen. And that's the ER collet. Thanks for watching. Now he'll learn about pull studs. This video is an introduction to pull studs. And here's what a pull stud looks like. We'll pull it out of the Cat 40 holder to show you. Here's a close-up look. Most important thing to remember about pull studs is not use the wrong one. Check before using in the machine. And that's the basics of pull studs. Thanks for watching. You'll see what the key seat cutter is. 
This is identification and basic use of the woodruff cutter, also known as a key seat cutter. Key seat cutters can cut grooves in hard to reach areas. A good way to illustrate this would be on the slide of this pistol. So we've taken the slide out now and you can see that it mates up to the lower receiver. And this key slot runs the distance of the slide. Obviously you wouldn't be able to get to that with a regular end mill. So that's one of many applications where you would use a key seat cutter. And here's some in the machine. There are many different tables out there, so you need to identify the ones that you're going to use and follow some of the basic parameters. And that's the basics of the key seat cutter. Thank you for watching. And now the end mills. This is basic identification of end mills. And these are end mills. Here's an end mill in action. Cutting on both the end and the side. This is a two fluted end mill. And here's a two fluted end mill in action. This is a four fluted end mill. And here's the four fluted in action. There are zero flutes all the way up to eight or more. And these are radius end mills. This is a corner radius end mill. And this is a full radius or a ball nose. Use a radius gauge to check the radius of your end mill. Here's some standard corner radii. This is a mill flat. Use a surface grinder to grind these. Don't grind them by hand. Measure the diameter of your end mill across the flutes. Same with an end mill of the corner radius. Here's a bald end mill in action. And there's the surface. Here's a corner radius end mill. Here it is in action. This is a roughing end mill. Here's what it looks like. So this is the basic criteria for selecting an end mill would be the number of flutes, the total length, the shank diameter, the length of cut or LOC, the corner radius, and sometimes you want a roughing end mill. And if you're filling out a tool list you might be required to know these things. So that's the basics of end mills. Thanks for watching. And now he's going to identify the taps. This is a brief introduction to taps just for identification purposes and this is a cut tap. It has flutes. And this is a roll tap. Cut taps and roll taps use different dimensions. Check the chart. Tapping is done a number of ways. This is a declutching tap head. And that's basic identification of taps. Thanks for watching. Here he'll learn what a pilot drill is. This video is about simple identification of the pilot drill, also known as the center drill, and these are center drills on the right hand side. And here's what a center drill looks like. I'm going to put one in the tail stock of this lathe. And we'll use it to drill a hole for a live center in our bar stock. Lock down the tail stock. Crank the handle forward and you can see how the pilot drill works. And that simple identification of the pilot drill. 
Thanks for watching. And now he's been instructed to use the drill chart to find the proper drill to go with his tap. This is a simple identification of the twist drill. There's a million of them in every shop, and here's what they look like. The bigger ones come in standard shank sizes, so they'll fit inside your chuck. We'll try to give you a look at the cutting end so you can see what a sharp one looks like, but we're going to do a lot more videos about these in the future, and we'll get down to the microscope with this cutting edge. This is a jobber length drill. This is a short length. And these are gun drills, also known as extended drill lengths. And that's twist drills. Thanks for watching. So now, somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 15 minutes, you got a guy that was standing around, and the phone was all he needed. Now he's populated a tool list for you. Sure, it's not going to be perfect, but now you can show him the finer points and you didn't waste a bunch of time showing him the whole thing. That's what it takes. Five minutes at a shot. Universal Machinist. Thanks to all our contributors and thanks for watching.